Alexander Hamilton. What do you think about when you hear his name? Probably the guy in the $10 bill. But do you actually know why he's on the $10 bill? He's gotta have some historical significance, right? Oh, but trust me, he does. Our story begins on January 11th, 1755, or 1757. He didn't talk a lot about his age, so no one is exactly sure. In the land of Nevis, British West Indies are also known as an island in the Caribbean. Alexander Hamilton didn't have the greatest childhood. After his father left him and his mother, they went to live with another man. When Hamilton was 12, his mother died of illness and he was now an orphan. He was shortly hired by Nicholas Kruger and they grew a very close boss-employee relationship. At age 14, he was placed in front of a tra trading partner. In 1776, after Kruger sent Hamilton to America for his education, he went to King's College, also known as Columbia University now. At age 16, Hamilton has to become an early immigrant. He was determined to make a better life for himself and make his mark on the world. But that's when the war broke out! <laughs> Hamilton was always a man to stand up for his beliefs. It's because of his intelligence and bravery, it was Alex who George Washington himself trusted to have as his right-hand man in battle. Let's hold on with the topic of war for a minute, and let's talk about some gossip, right? It's time for Alexander Hamilton's love life. We're reliable with the ladies! At a winter's ball in the middle of the war, Alexander meets his wife-to-be, Elizabeth Schuyler. The end of the American Revolution is dawning. Alexander led his own group of soldiers in Yorktown and led them to victory. America is free with the help of Hamilton, but no one gives him recognition. After the war, Hamilton went back to New York and studied law. He was an outstanding lawyer. He defended many loyalists that were getting sued after the war. He helped fight for loyalist rights and won the Rugers and Waddington case and even helped establish the Treatise Act. As we all know, the Articles of Confederation were a disappointment to America. Just like me. Hamilton, along with James Madison and John Jay, they created the Federalist Papers. They planned to write a series of 25 essays defending the new U.S. Constitution, since Alexander knew how to write. In six months, they wrote 85 essays. John Jay got six after writing five. James Madison wrote 29. Hamilton wrote the other 51. The new U.S. Constitution was made thanks to Hamilton's writing. Because of his trust for him, President George Washington asked Alex to join him in his cabinet. He agreed and earned the title of America's first Secretary of Treasury. Alexander was a hard worker. Once he was accepted into Washington's cabinet, he put his work over everything. He wrote as if he was running out of time. He had big plans for our country and he wanted to make them a reality. The cabinet meetings were a struggle. Hamilton and the Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson, weren't each other's cup of tea. <coughs> Hamilton wanted to establish a national bank for the U.S., but Jefferson wasn't on board with it. After a lot of fights in the cabinet, Alexander managed to win and establish America's first financial system with Washington's approval. After Washington left his position of president, Hamilton goes through a series of unfortunate events. It all starts with a sex scandal that he had and he committed against his wife and published the Reynolds pamphlet. The cabinet's fights were always against him. Everyone hated him for what he did to Eliza and his en enemies were destroying his reputation. The worst one of all was when his eldest son, Philip, died in a duel. He was only 19. His death left him and Eliza into a spiraling depression. She forgave him while they were grieving. The election of 1800 comes around. It's Thomas Jefferson versus Aaron Burr. Federalists all over America came to Hamilton asking who they should vote for, so Hamilton had to choose. As shocking as it was, Hamilton chose Jefferson because he appreciates his beliefs more than Burr's. This obviously made Burr furious. Whoa there, calm down Burr, don't go killing anyone. On July 12, 1804, at the break of dawn, Alexander leaves his house for the last time and heads to New Jersey. The final part of Hamilton's story has come, the Burr vs. Hamilton duel. They meet up at New Jersey in the early morning. Burr challenged Hamilton to the duel out of frustration from the election and other past encounters they've had. Past letters have shown that Hamilton didn't want to kill Burr. Despite everything, he was a man of honor. Hamilton aimed his pistol into the sky and Burr shot him in the stomach. He was then rushed to New York and died the next day. Eliza was at his side. 
In my opinion, Alexander Hamilton has a revolutionary story, but he doesn't get enough credit for what he has done. Before taking on this project, I only knew two things about Hamilton. He was the guy in the $10 bill and was killed in a duel. We didn't acknowledge him a lot in class. I find it unfair that we talk more about Jefferson than Hamilton. So what if Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence he, and doubled the size of the country? He didn't fight for the revolution. He was vacationing in France. When my mom asked who I, what I was doing for my project, she didn't even know who Alexander Hamilton was. Did they even acknowledge him when she was in school? There's a musical for about him for a reason. By the way, it's really good, so I recommend you listen to it. So Alexander Hamilton, an immigrant and an orphan, who helped fight for our country's freedom, wrote essays defending our current constitution, helped perfect our country's law, and created our country's financial system. Alexander Hamilton has done so much for us. From now on, when I see a $10 bill, I will see a story of a man who worked his way onto the dollar bill and left his mark into our country's history. In the musical, they say, you have no control who lives, who dies, who tells your story, and they're right. Alexander could have done so much more if he only had more time, just like his wife Eliza. But I'm glad that I was able to tell his story. Who tells your story?